video cameras are more sensitive and can see more than the eye is capable of, including infrared light. This is our infrared flashlight. and has a light source in here that only emits infrared, so you won't be able to see it with the naked eye. So if you look down here, I'm shining this flashlight right onto the plastic. So this is on right now? Absolutely. I don't see anything. Look at the camera. Okay, see, right. I can see. Clearly holding. I can see that it's on. Flashlight. Infrared is used in many different technologies. The military uses infrared lasers to guide heat-seeking missiles towards and away from targets, and NASA uses it to transmit information across thousands of miles of space. What this suggests. Is that if the object in the Japanese video is emitting infrared light, it could be capable of projecting a form of communication or a form of weaponry, and either could be a significant hazard near an airport. There are things that we may not be able to see, but they may actually be there. Meaning that there's a definite connection between this JAL 1521 video footage and the object seen over Chicago O'Hare. How are objects infiltrating secure airspace without being seen? Digital analysis of the Osaka video may finally provide an answer to the mystery surrounding these airport sightings. The speed would be beyond any aircraft that we have. Numerous employees at Chicago's O'Hare International Airport claim to see a disc-shaped object, but control tower officials and radar see nothing. A luminous orb is caught on tape over Japan, and seems to fly dangerously close to a jetliner, but it can't be seen with the naked eye. Are these alleged UFOs displaying advanced capabilities that prevent them from being seen or detected? Ted has called on image analyst Terence Masson to try and identify the unknown object. I noticed it goes really close to the wing. That plane cannot be more than a thousand feet away. No, I mean, it's very close. If we can determine whether or not the object is on this side of the aircraft, right. it means it's less than a thousand feet away. Terence isolates, sharpens, and zooms in as tightly as possible on the wingtip. But the image is inconclusive. To my eye, I would guess that it was behind the wing. What do you think? To me, it looks like the object's、uh, between the aircraft and us. It's closer.、But、we're definitely at the limit of the information available in the image. Not knowing the object's relative location to the plane means calculating the speed of the object will help give additional clues. First thing I'll do is stabilize around that large aircraft that's in the foreground of the frame. And that way, we can isolate that object and judge the relative speed of our orb that's flying through frame. The stabilized image makes the airplane appear frozen in space. The object's actual flight path and movement past the airplane can now be accurately measured. It looks like in about one second of video, it's traveling what appears to be about two lengths of wingtip to wingtip. Right. It's doing about 350 to 400 feet per second. Right.、So. Which gets us to.、Uh, 500 miles per hour. Ted estimates that if the object is at the same distance as the airplane, it is moving roughly 500 miles per hour. If it is closer, it travels a shorter distance in the same amount of time, meaning it is slower. But if it is in the distance, it could be traveling faster than anything built by humans. So we have a contradiction here. If it were near to us and within a reasonable speed, we should be able to see the structure. Now, if it's very far away from us, we wouldn't be able to see the structure, which we can't. But the math tells us that the speed would be beyond any aircraft that we have. Terence is also able to prove that the object is moving away from the camera. Clearly, it's it's disappearing in the distance.、Um, it's being affected by the atmospheric distortion, the haze. It's、uh, it's fading off. You see, the, you know, the color saturation goes down. That's all consistent with an object moving away in distance. This rules out military jets or helicopters, because they would be closer and identifiable earlier in the video, 
And another characteristic also eliminates anything conventional. When the object should supposedly be extremely close to us, it looks like a single orb. When it's in the midfield, it does look like two distinct point sources of light very close together. And then as it fades away, they merge into one point. Why would it go from being a single orb when it's the closest, and when it's in the midfield, it would be a double, and then further away, it's back to a single again? That's not really consistent. We still don't know what this is, and I'm not sure we'll ever be able to get a conclusive decision on this. In both Chicago and Japan, the identity of these objects remains elusive. One evades radar and supposedly uses more power than a 747 to blow through 8,000 feet of cloud cover, while another remains invisible and could be traveling at speeds beyond any known aircraft. If technology like this cannot be identified in sensitive airspace, what are the repercussions? Bill meets with former British Ministry of Defense official Nick Pope, who was responsible for investigating and researching UFOs for the British government. It doesn't matter what UFOs are. It doesn't matter whether you're a skeptic or a believer. If you've got something unidentified operating in the controlled, restricted airspace, then it's an air safety issue. Alarmed by the FAA's refusal to investigate the incident at O'Hare, Pope writes an op-ed piece in the New York Times entitled, Unidentified Flying Threats, in July 2008. A healthy skepticism about extraterrestrial space travelers leads people to disregard UFO sightings without a moment's thought. But in the United States, this translates into over-dependence on radar data and indifference to all kinds of unidentified aircraft. Whatever these objects are, because they're in commercial airspace, we have to take something seriously. If we're not interested in something, and unless it behaves like a conventional aircraft, it makes us vulnerable both to terrorism and to espionage. A commercial airliner on final approach to land is probably one of the most dangerous phases of flight and get you know the potential of some sort of interference hitting an aircraft at that phase of flight is actually an extreme danger. If pilots and ground crew whose job it is to protect the safety of the aircraft if they say they see something their testimony should be taken as rock solid. This may actually be working against us. By keeping this, this UFO phenomenon a secret, uh, pilots themselves are in a danger of not knowing what to do when they encounter a UFO. The FAA or, or the government or, or someone needs to uh, really put in place some kind of protocol. As the UFO phenomenon continues to be denied, technological capabilities seem to be escalating and with no official policy or investigation into these events, can we really consider our skies to be safe?